Hi, so it's time to have a look at this thing and turn it into a generator. Now, we recently did a video, Awesome Exercise Bike into Generator Hack, and somebody noticed that that was actually a trial run for this. And I have to say, I was pretty impressed. Because the problem with this thing, obviously, is it's going to turn, but obviously not like super fast. I mean, fast, but not super fast. And the torque on the shaft is going to be really, really low. So you can't just bolt a motor onto it. Well, that's what I think. I think that that wouldn't work very well and you wouldn't get that much energy out of it. Which is why we did that thing on the motor, on the exercise bike. Because when we turn at the center of a shaft, we have a much lower speed than when we turn at the edge of the shaft. And I wanted to see what kind of things would happen if we did that. And to be honest, it was mightily impressive. Now, we used the internals of this thing. This is a synchronous motor meant for the turntable from a microwave oven. When you crack it open, what you get is this. It's a coil, basically. It's a coil of hair-thin wire that's relatively flat and quite open. And that's what gave us the good result. So, of course, that's what I began to think about. What I'm thinking about is sticking a load of coils on the edge here so that we cover the circumference, sticking a load of magnets on the spinny bit, and spinning it around and seeing what we get. Now, it didn't take a lot of spinning to get that going, and we have an awful lot of turns there of very tiny wire. Now, I could buy a load of these and crack them open and get the coils, but I was looking at these, and I need something like 40 or 50 of them, and they're about five pounds each, which is not too bad, really, I suppose. But that would be 200 to 250 quid just for the coils. Plus, then I'm buying a load of these and throwing a load of scrap away, and, and that doesn't strike me as a particularly good thing to do. So what I want to do is I want to mimic this coil, but make it coreless. Now, in order to do that, I obviously have to make a bobbin. And the bobbin requires an awful lot of plastic. So, I came across these things. This is half of it, actually. It's uh, an ABS light fitting of impact-resistant ABS. You can see what I've done. I've just gone down the back with the flat end and drilled out a lot of discs. And I used a hole cutter to do that. Then I obviously cleaned the discs up and made sure that the centre hole was 8mm. So, they are going to be the basics of my bobbin. So what I've got in front of me here is a jig, and I'll give you a close-up of that in a second. That jig is to help me form those bobbins, and there is a completed bobbin. And I need to make a whole load of those that are going to go around the edge of there. So let me give you a close-up of the jig and how it actually works. Okay, so the jig is just a bit of plastic board, and I've drilled an 8mm hole. I've got some 8mm Perspex rod, stick that in, put a disc on, bit of super glue around it to hold it in place. Then I've got this, which is a bit of hard board, and the hard board is um, 6 millimeters. So I've got a bit of 6mm hard board there. Another disc goes on top. Press it down, a bit of super glue around it. Move that out of the way so it doesn't glue. When that super glue is dried, I'll end up with another one of them. So I can make a whole bunch all the same. Okay, so when I measured up, it turned out I needed 32, so I made 32. Now, I've left a little bit on here of the inner bar, so I can put them in the lathe when it comes to turning the actual coil, and there's a coil that I've turned. So all I did was chuck that in the lathe and then turn that coil up. And then I removed that little bit and sanded it flat, so I've got a nice flat coil there. Now, I need to make sure all the other coils are roughly in the same re region, and I'm going to do that by distance from the edge here. I mean, it's a bit rough and ready. You could check it by checking the resistance, but hey, we're after speed more than anything here. So, we've got our coil. I've got one made. I need to make another 31. But this one, obviously, I want to test the idea and see whether I'm actually on the right track or not. So, what I'm going to do is stick this in the exercise bike, just like the previous coil, and we'll spin it up and see what we get out of it. So, there's the coil right there. It's where we put that other coil when we did this the first time round. And all I'm going to do to test whether this idea would work or not is jump on the bike and pedal it. Now, put the meter here and it's reading volts at the moment, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. I can't, obviously, which is a bit of a disappointment, but let's give it a go. 
<coughs> Whoa, hey, 16 volts. That's very cool. Okay, I'm going to swap it onto the amp reading. See what milliamps we can get. Oh, I got 120. That's awesome. Okay, so that was really kind of cool. I did check the video, and I think we got 19 volts at 110 milliamps at the max, really, which is about 2 watts or so. So that little coil will produce in the setup there about 2 watts. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind. The uh, magnets I'm using are ceramic magnets, ferrites, actually. Uh, and I'm using those because that's what I had available. Now, I have ordered some magnets to go in here because I think it's worth the spend, but I ordered ferrite magnets. I can buy 100 ferrite magnets of that size for 25 quid, and if I bought near dimiums, they would be a, fi uh, a fiver each, I think. I could get a five for the same price. I'm not spending 500 quid on magnets. I don't mind spending 25 quid on them, but I'm not going to spend 500 quid on them. So it's really a cost-benefit exercise for me. How much I spend on it and how much I get back out of it matters to me. If I wanted to uh, up the power output, obviously I'd buy a stronger magnet, stronger field, more power. The other thing on that disc, obviously, is it's uh, a bit starved of magnets. It's about a third of the number of magnets that will fit on there, because that's all the magnets I had. I've actually ordered 100, so I should be able to get this crammed with magnets. So we should see a higher output just using more magnets. And if you use a stronger magnet with a stronger field, you should see a higher output. But people do like to calculate, and uh, we got 2 watts out of that, so that's the way it is. And if we have 32 of them, we can kind of expect around about 64 watts, which I personally think is really quite reasonable, especially when you think where I've spent on this. I mean, this basically is a couple of broken light fittings and some broken microwaves, so that cost me nothing apart from the time it took to do it. And it took me a couple of hours. I've got about an hour spinning coils, so about three hours for um, the price of that. What would that be? Seven, eight hundred quid? Yeah, I'm happy to spend three hours on that. <laughs> so the plan of this, obviously, is to basically attach them somewhere on there go around, fit the magnets in, and we're going to have ourselves an axial generator. Now this thing, um, the idea of this is that it takes hot air from the inside of your house and blows it outside, and these are to catch the wind, and that helps create a little vacuum uh, in there, which pushes the thing through, and out comes the wind. Now the Aussies are very keen on this sort of stuff, and they improve the efficiency of this by adding this thing. So it's a fan blade. Now, fan blades obviously are pitched to force the air in one direction, and in, in this case it's in that direction. So they've fitted a fan blade to it, forcing the air up, spinning around, forcing it out, and they reckon they've got a 40% increase in the efficiency on that. Don't know if that's true or not, but it's certainly what they reckoned, and they stuck a fan blade in. My thought is to reverse that fan blade and stick it in, so the air coming here creates a slight negative pressure on the inside, this should assist that pressure and hopefully we should get a um, efficiency improvement from this. Now the other thing of course is that this is actually itself a flywheel. I mean there's mass here, this thing weighs a few kilos, so when this gets spinning it stays spinning because it's a flywheel. I want to use that flywheel effect which is why I haven't put metal cores in here. Now, I was really interested in that output from the lack of metal core. You could put a metal core in if you want, but of course you've got a magnet next to a metal, you're going to have cogging, and that's going to have to be overcome. So I decided that there was plus and minuses to all things, and I'd leave out the metal core. And given that we're getting actually a reasonable output from that, I'm quite okay with that. That's what I'm going to do. Anyway, what I now need to do, obviously, is wind these other 31 coils and get them stuck in there. The magnets are on order, so the uh, video showing more of this won't be tomorrow because they still have to arrive. But I will continue this project as and when. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and keep your eyes open for the rest of it. 